Uh, I want to apologize for this late Rotten Mango reaction. Um, this week has been very hectic, so everything is all jumbled. But I'm here today, and um, we're watching Chef Brother Caught with Missing Sister's DNA inside of his rice cooker. This caught this this this, uh, this caught my eye because I told you I was going to get a rice cooker, and I still have not gotten one. So let's give myself a reason to not get a rice cooker for the next couple months. Um, all right, let's bada bing in the bottom doom. Let's go. Have you ever wanted to watch more videos than the thousands of ones that are already on my channel? Hell yeah. How'd I do that? Huh? Tell me. You know, like the ones that I can't show on YouTube? Uh, I, I got you. I have a Patreon with three tiers. This is what you will get per tier. Both of you like to read it. Honestly, I love it. We be going crazy on the Patreon, but I'm going to let you be the judge of that. So y'all go ahead and check out the Patreon and let me know what you think. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for supporting. And thank you for everything. Now, let's get back to the video. Never mind. We're going to find out. Bada bing, bada boo. Lucy felt like she got lucky with her husband. He's 10 years older than her, and that was initially a concern for her. She's got to be pragmatic about it, right? But it also has its advantages. Oh. Usually with age comes maturity, patience, mm. and the ability to provide. And she's 27. He's mm. 37. So it's not like this alarming age gap where she's freshly 18. And he was I mean, caring. Yeah. He's reliable. Mm. And she was just so excited I mean, to start this new... Uh... I mean, a 10, 10, 10 year age gap is not bad. I don't think so if you're an adult. Still kind of weird. It's been it's been 10 years since I um started high school. Doesn't feel like 10 years. That's insane. Um no. Oh, play. Come on, nigga. New phase of her life with him. She was going to move from her hometown in mainland China to mm -hmm. Taiwan, make new friends, maybe start a family with this man. The possibilities were endless. And she admits, you know, a large part of why she married this guy. It has a lot more to do with settling down instead of instead of love. But she oh. could learn to love him. That's what she felt like. It was a little isolating to be without her friends in Taiwan, but she could call them. And she did every single night. She would call them and tell them everything that her sweet husband did for her that day. Aww. Which, by the way, this is crazy, but he never wanted her to be in the kitchen. All of her friends are like, what? that is insane. I'm so jealous of you. Most of our husbands, super traditional. They want me to cook three meals a day. And your okay, husband that's nuts. constantly cooking for you, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You're never in the kitchen. I'm not going to lie. I want to cook for my wife. I'm going to cook for my wife. I'm going to cook for my girlfriend and everything. But... Nigga, I want you to be here with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, you know how like they be like, oh, I mean, that's if you want to. Like, if you're open to, you know what I'm saying? Like cooking and shit. Bro, I want you to help out. Cooking, cooking is tiring as hell, bro. And then you then you gotta cook for like two people. And if you have kids, you're gonna have to cook for three, maybe four, maybe five or six. Motherfucker, you help me out. What the hell? Like, yeah, nigga. Shit, if if you shit, if my girlfriend or wife is better cooked than me, I'm gonna help out. I'm gonna sit on the counter and give her some utensils if she needs it. I help her whatever else. Like, ain't nothing wrong with that. I guess I'm not traditional. Yeah, well, know. he's a chef, so I guess it kind of makes sense that he would want to spend time in his own kitchen, right? Yeah. He would, however, get a little snappy at her when she disturbed his peace in there. Uh huh. That's kind of enduring. You know, he's just very passionate when he's cooking. He doesn't want anyone to mess with his flow. So for the first few weeks, Lucy was in marital bliss. That's a red flag. <laughs> but as time went on, she starts having these really odd suspicions. What? Her husband didn't just get snappy when she tried to help him cook in the kitchen. Even if she walked into the kitchen for a glass of water, he would be lounging in the living room, jumping up off the sofa. Oh, no, nah, there's something in there. Nope, there's something in that damn kitchen, shawty. Nope, nope, get out of there. There's something in that kitchen. There's something in that kitchen. The water for her. <laughs> it's one thing to not want someone messing up your process or your work, but it's another thing to just not want your wife in a whole room of the house, like such an yeah. important room of the house. And obviously that's going to leave like, yo, yeah, what you got to hide? Nigga, you can't hide shit from your wife. Them, 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 them girls, girls be real, uh, what's it called? What's, what's the word? Intuitive and all that shit? Nigga, anyway. Even if she's not moving things around or touching anything, 
but maybe she's been spending too much time alone without her friends. She's thinking, maybe I'm overthinking things. Maybe he's just trying to be nice. But one day while he was at work, curiosity gets the best of Lucy and she decides this is so silly. So silly. I'm just going to go in there and make myself something to eat. And he, if he's going to get upset about that, then he's a horrible husband. What do you want me to do? Starve to death? <laughs> she walks over to the kitchen, opens up the freezer door. Maybe there were some frozen dumplings she could steam. Okay. But instead, she makes eye contact. Huh? Inside the freezer was a woman's frozen head. Uh, Stephanie, your expression is killing me. What the fuck? She had long hair, her eyes were wide open, and staring at Lucy. Lucy slammed the freezer door shut. She ran back into the room and she's like, I gotta leave now, right? Yeah, get the no, fuck out of here. He knows where her family lives. He knows everything about her. He would know that she saw the head and left. I mean, this man would probably track her down to keep her quiet. I mean, he's a chef. He's not a... Never mind. I did, I did say if someone wants to find you, they can definitely... Let me stop The only talking. other option is divorce, but how? She doesn't have a single person in the area that she knows and she's terrified of this guy. Even mm, going to the fuck. cops, what if he hides the head somehow? Lucy oh, decides she took the a only picture. way to survive in the long run is to wait a few weeks before making up some lie that her grandma passed away and she would have to go to her family. She would have to go back home to mainland China. Okay. For the funeral, of course. And then she could tell her parents everything that she saw, everything that happened, and then they would help her figure a way out of this. But that meant for the next few weeks, she would have to pretend like nothing was wrong. She would have to control the fear in her voice, her facial expressions. She would have to not flinch whenever he got close to her. Whenever he Ooh. walked into the kitchen, she would have to not look suspicious. Ooh. If he suspected that she knew about the head, what would he even do to her? She had to play this right. She would have to sit down at the table, smiling, happy, in love, and get excited over these new dishes that he's cooking and try not to gag wondering. Fuck. Where is the rest of that woman's body? Oh, no. Oh, shit. Hey, bro, what the hell? Hey, bro, imagine you going to the, 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 the kitchen to just, just to go in the fridge to get, like, some, you know, cran grape juice. And it's somebody's head. But I would think I am high out of my mind. I would have think he drugged me. I'm not going to lie. I probably would have think I have been drugged. Because there's no way there's a head in the kitchen in the fridge where it's where i live here i live here i don't care what you say nigga this is my kitchen too bitch i'm going in this fridge and when you're gone i'm going to go in the fridge are you crazy if you're gonna hide the head hide it somewhere where it's not accessible like the fucking fridge like what how did people are so dumb as always, full show notes are available Recipes at RodneyEaglePodcast.com. We had our Mandarin-speaking researchers assist on this case so we could gather all the facts and details that were out there. Hopefully, this will be a comprehensive deep dive on the case. But as always, with foreign cases, please let us know in the comments if there was anything we missed, anything lost in translation, or any just extra details that you know about this one. Mm. And with that being said, let's go. Let's get started. Let's go. If you have plans to go on a cruise, or maybe like a, like a long boat ride, Hell no. some people might recommend that you pray to the goddess Mazu. Oh. Do you know the goddess Mazu? Mazu? Yes. No. Okay, well, her name translates to Eternal Mother. Does it not? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, many believe she's the goddess that watches over the seas. So for generations, seamen would go fishing off the coast of Taiwan only to come back to land and their eyes would be wide. Like, this is how Goddess Mazu started her story. Her, their hair would be soaking wet and they would tell the craziest stories of like, oh my God, our boat almost capsized. It almost flipped over. But then this woman came down from the sky in this red robe. She said her name was Mazu and she saved us. She hmm. saved us. This is like hundreds of years ago. So unlike other goddesses, fishermen, sailors, anyone who claims to have been saved by goddess Mazu, they said that she never asked for anything in return. Hmm. She's just this powerful, benevolent, compassionate, giving goddess. And eventually, people didn't just worship the goddess Mazu when they went into open waters, but even on land. She was kind of the goddess of life in Taiwan. She will protect you no matter what. Uh, I was about to say, does it? My question is, part of my ignorance, for like, for like the for the gods in other countries and stuff like that, is there like a is there like a radius block or something like that? Like, say, say like Miss Goddess Mazu, she's like she looks over the sea. This was like this is what I was thinking before she said like they do it on land too. Like would would their prayer like would your prayers be heard if it's not on the sea or something like that? Like is there like a jurisdiction or something? I don't I don't know. 
if y'all in the comments uh have are in like religions where you pray to other gods please let me know you know what i'm saying i i, I would love to learn i took like theology class in high school and in New Taipei City, there's even a temple named after that's her. That's pretty. It was built 250 years ago. Okay, which is technically crazy because that's around the same age as America. Yeah. So there's this temple built. It's very, very old. Older it's than America. It's the Xuanshu wow. Mazu Temple. And it's really interesting because there's actually a lot of temples in this area. Mm -hmm. This one was built 250 years ago, and it's actually pretty modest in size. So it's not one of these crazy, olden day, ancient buildings that's so massive and so grand. It's like a tiny little temple. Uh. But it's almost always jam-packed with tourists and locals. Some people will even say, I came from America. I came from all around the world just to be at this temple. Oh, sure. The locals said, this was one of the more favorable temples that you could pray at. Basically, a lot of your prayers may come true here at this very temple. Some people said they could feel it the moment that they walked in. There was this energy shift. According to people who have been there, once you walk in, you're hit with this scent of strong incense. Mm. And you're in the city, but you suddenly feel this just heavy peace. It's like a weighted blanket. You just feel that peace. It feels calm. Oh, and then wow. you even forget what time it is. You're just in the moment praying. People are kneeling in front of sacred statues. Some people are lighting up new incense. Others are rearranging and setting up flowers and fruit platters at the altar. And it just feels like a, feels like a very peaceful time of reflection. But that day, it would be shattered by this ear-piercing screech. Like, what? Just blood-curdling. It's the type of scream that makes you want to kind of tilt your ear down because it sounds like nails on a chalkboard. And everyone is whipping their heads around trying to look for the direction of this scream because... I mean, obviously, it's not a natural scream. Trying to figure out what's going on. I would freak Everyone's out. frozen in the middle of whatever they're doing, in the middle of praying, <laughs> arranging the fruit. Everyone is still, except this one woman is running frantically towards the temple. Oh. She's like sweating. Her hair is a mess. Her eyes are kind of like bulging out of her head. And everyone's freaked out. What is this woman going through? Is this, it seems like she's shaking from what though? Adrenaline, fear, psychosis? Like, why is she coming to the temple? She runs into the temple, completely disregards everybody in there, drops to her knees in front of the Mazu statue, and she starts blurting out a bunch of prayers. She's stuttering, and nothing is making sense. Everyone can hear her train of thought, and it's just jumbled, like scrambled eggs. It doesn't make sense. It's like she's verbally vomiting. Mm. She's sweating. She doesn't even look at anyone around her. She doesn't even realize that she's disturbing the peace. She Everyone's looking at her like she's crazy. Oh. No, she just kept praying rubbing her palms together, word vomiting, shaking, sweating, and then nothing. She just stops, gets up, and leaves the temple. And everyone is like, what is going on? What it was like she hell? was in a trance, okay? She's just walking out one foot in front of the other until she ends up in front of a police station. She's now sitting in front of these police officers, vomiting up the same thoughts and memories. It's like the floodgates had opened and everything is just spilling out at once on the table in front of them. The police are telling her, like, slow down, slow down. Okay, you're the janitor at the temple. Hmm. And you what? I went to go clean the bathrooms. They're detached from the temple, maybe like 600 feet away. I went to clean the men's bathroom first, and I saw this plastic bag in there, right? It's one of those black grocery store flimsy plastic bags that you get, mm -hmm. and clearly something was in there. And it was just sitting on the back of the toilet. So if you're using the restroom, your back would be to this bag, right? Mm -hmm. And she thought, maybe it's takeout that someone forgot, or someone was just too lazy to throw their own trash away and left it for whoever would clean the stink? restroom. So that's what she was going to do. She was just going to trash it. But then she was worried. What if someone didn't leave it? What if they accidentally left it? And then there's something valuable in there. And this is a temple. We get tourists. We get locals. You know, what if they come back looking for it? Uh-huh. So she starts opening up the bag. There's like a tight knot on this black plastic bag. She's trying to get it open. And the minute that she undoes it, she said it's like the most pungent smell she's oh, ever smelled in her life. Oh, it's a dead body. Like someone sprayed something into her face. Oh, my God. She never smelled anything like it. It was stinking up the whole bathroom. She's waving her hand in front of her nose, squinting her eyes, because it's the type of smelly that you feel like is going to absorb into your body. Ew. So you feel like you need to squint your eyes so it doesn't penetrate. And she's briefly debating, okay, maybe I should throw it away in the trash. Assuming maybe it's seafood. That's what she's telling the police. Like, maybe I thought it was seafood that had gone bad. Or maybe baby diapers that people had been just, like, leaving around. Ew. It smelled like it had been marinating for a while. But something in her head just told her to keep going. She keeps untying the bag. She finds more layers. Maybe it's curiosity. Maybe she knew that she would think about this bag every single night for the rest of the week when she laid in bed because she just needed to know what's in there. I felt that. There's layers upon layers. Layers of bags? It's like she opens the bag and there's Another a jacket. Bag. So she's like taking out the jacket. Then there's uh -huh. a shirt. She's taking out How the jacket. How big and is this bag? Wrap. She's like, okay, what's going on? And then finally, a decapitated head. Uh it was covered in salt. It was basically fermented. She cries to the police, like, I will never get this look out of my mind because the amount of salt that was covering this head, the head was shriveled up like a raisin. Oh. It was completely dry. 
So she's just letting this out all on the table. I mean, probably not organized like the way I just told you. It's like just coming out all at once, like she was in the temple. And the police are debating for a good minute. Maybe this janitor lost her mind. I mean, she looks kind of crazy. Her hair is a mess. Her eyes are like bulging out. She, she doesn't seem credible. But then right phone? then, the phone rings. Huh? I'm like, what, what is going on? A police station about three hours away was calling. We have a very strange letter and it falls under your jurisdiction. So they're like, okay, yeah, just tell us the letter. Apparently, an anonymous letter was sent earlier this morning to that police station three hours away. They uh -huh. initially thought it was a prank. They didn't get around to it because they're like, uh, first of all, that's three hours away. We've got nothing to do with this. This feels like a kid wrote it to scare us. So they disregarded it. Why are police, why are they always doing shit like this? But then they were thinking, you know what? Maybe we should just have a different police station look into it instead of us driving three hours. Okay, what does it say? It reads, hello, officer, Chen Wan Ting. We'll call her Cece. Cece's corpse is inside the men's restroom 600 feet away from a temple in New Taipei City. Excuse Please me? Please give her a burial. I can't deal with it. Ex Thank you. Ex a kind-hearted man. Excuse me? Mm. Wow. Now the officers are looking at the janitor like, okay, this is really bad. Like, whatever's going on is true and it's bad. So they rush in their patrol cars, turn their lights on the whole nine yards. They start heading to the temple bathroom. They slam open the bathroom stall door and the smell hits them hard. And the janitor was telling the truth. There was this black plastic bag sitting on the toilet. They opened it up, revealed the first layer, another plastic bag. So I guess she had put everything back where it was. Then slowly peeled off another one to find another layer, a woven sack, oh my God. a jacket, a t-shirt, a pair of black floral shorts. And then lastly, a female pair of underwear covered in male bodily fluids. And Ew. Underneath all seven layers was a woman's decapitated head. Oh my God. Covered in salt and a little note. And the note read, identity equals Chen Wan Ting. Huh. What? Whoever left her head wanted the police to find her corpse. Not only that, but they wanted the police to know who the head belonged to. But why? Wouldn't that go against most criminals' best interest? Yeah. Are you telling me this freaking chef is a goddamn head thief? Are you, what? Maybe this wasn't even right. Maybe she wasn't CC. Maybe this is a red herring. But as of right now, that is the strongest lead that they have. And it was time to figure out who is Cece, <clears throat> who wants her dead, and also, where is the rest of Cece's body? Yeah, what? The detectives find Cece. Oh. Well, her, they find her apartment. They don't find her, oh. right? Oh. And they start questioning her neighbors one by one. And it all started the same. All of them were like, Cece who? Literally all of them. Nobody knew Cece. And the police would show them a picture, because Cece has a missing, po missing persons poster. She's in the database. And they show them a picture. She went. Oh, I'm going to show her face. Because she showed her face. This is this is CC. Rest in peace, CC. Oh my God. Missing three months ago, so not even that long ago. Come on, you guys are the neighbors. And they're like, oh my God, yeah, I know her. But we just called her little sweetheart around here. It's like a little nickname. So the police are assuming, well, then that must mean you guys are very close to her because why would you call your neighbor a little sweetheart? And all the neighbors are like, no, absolutely not. We were not close at all. What? Some neighbors stated, you know, some of us felt bad for her, but she was just not that fun of a person to be around. There were always these strange noises that would come out of her unit. Sometimes she would run out in her pajamas, stand in the hallway, and stare at anyone that passes by. And if you happen to make eye contact with her, she would start hysterically laughing. What? Okay. It was weird. Oh my God. There were always men coming in and out of that unit. And I think that they were assaulting her because she would run out of her apartment, her hair would be a mess, and her clothes looked like someone had been trying to rip them off. And Hey, thank you for the sub, Psycho Dragon. We are not on stream right now, but thank you. I appreciate that. Oh my God, that scared me as well. I thought that I I thought somebody sent me a note. I'm not gonna lie to you. And she would scream, "This man is trying to assault me." And at first, as neighbors, we tried to help, but it just kept happening so frequently. What? And sometimes we didn't even know if we could believe her. She was always drunk or high. Some neighbors were a little bit more sympathetic. They said, "You know, we just all kind of felt bad for her, and we felt bad for her brother. He was the one that always took care of her. Like no matter how bad she got, no matter if she went on a drug binge, and even." This is, this is, this is what, this is what the brother looks like. He got short hair. Even his wife left him recently because of her. Oh my God. They say it's because she had a family emergency, like her grandma died or something. But we all know that she left because of all the family drama. She probably couldn't handle the stress anymore. The victim was always going around accusing people of assaulting her or saying that she needed to be assaulted to make money. The brother lives in this apartment? The brother, yeah, they live together. Uh, the brother so and this Cece, mm. brother, Cece, and brother's wife yeah, live in this the, apartment. The wife just left. Right. right. Cece is dead. Mm -hmm. mm. So the officers, they do more digging into Cece's past. And it was, um, yeah, it was just grim. Okay, so Cece and her family, they were.
I'm suspecting a brother right now. Dealt some really shitty cards. Cece was the fourth of six siblings, which is a huge family. I mean, factoring in two parents, that's eight mouths to feed. And they mm. weren't doing well financially. And then when Cece was a teenager, her father passed away from excessive drinking and I assume oh. liver problems. So now Cece's mom was raising all six kids by herself. Thankfully, some of them were grown enough to move out of the house, but still, I mean, she was a single mom to a lot of kids. And I don't think that she was necessarily a bad mom. I think Cece's mom tried. She tried her best given the circumstances, but it just wasn't, it wasn't perfect. I mean, it wasn't even good. So she was working nonstop every single day, barely had time to rest. She definitely did not have time to educate her children, help them with homework, make sure that they weren't falling into bad influences. Mm -hmm. Like the kids were basically raising themselves. She did put food on the table. She put a roof over their heads, but that was about it. She just didn't have the capacity to do anything else. Mm -hmm. That was her priority. Okay. She's not like a tiger mom demanding to know what are your grades? Like sit down, show me your report card. She didn't do any of that. And so a lot of the kids, you know, the teachers would say, we don't want to call it flaws, but they definitely seemed under-supervised. We could tell. Cece was actually called the school flower of her grade. Wow. Yeah. So that's that... the term given to typically the prettiest girl in the entire school. Oh, okay. Usually multiple popular boys would be trying to take her out on secret dates after school. Also, not only that, but also have good grades. Yes. But Cece was the exception. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No good grades. Yeah. And her desk drawer was always filled to brim with snacks, love letters from boys who had crushes on her. And she looked like an innocent girl next door. Almost like all the school flowers, you know, that stereotypical look. She had more soft, rounded features. She's very conventionally pretty growing up. Okay, to give you context, when she was 15 years old, she's walking home from school and she hears this man behind her. Excuse me, student. Excuse me. Take my business card. I'm a scout for a huge entertainment agency and I think that you are exactly what we're looking for. Oh, shit. He runs off. He just runs? And he throws away his business card. Oh, fuck. She did not care to be in the entertainment industry. And it's not because she was too busy studying or she wanted to focus on graduating high school. She straight up felt like the industry was lame. Like, she was too cool for it. Oh, so you know how high right. schoolers... You know how high schoolers are. And for Cece, it was even worse because she was hanging out with these really intense crowds that felt like school is lame. Learning is lame. All of these things are lame. They would smoke, drink, skip class, and do drugs. Oh, she wanted to know. insanely hardcore in Taiwan. She wanted like, to know. Like, even for adults to do drugs that's crazy for high schoolers to do drugs insanity mm. so to them everything else was lame and it seemed like cc's mom knew what was going on but like she didn't know how to stop it it's not like she had the funds or the time to just sit there and make sure that cc went to school she would yell at her she because eventually cc would be it, it escalated to the point where she was expelled from school so her mom is yelling at her but it's not working cc drops out of high school and she gets married at 18 years old even her friends were like 18 like you should wait you have so many guys that like you. You should explore your options. Don't tie yourself down so quickly. Like, why would you do that? Cece had what they called lover's brain. There was no talking to her about this guy. She was in so deep. I mean, she felt like this guy was the savior of the planet. The whole reason that she was born for this moment to be his bride. Like, to put it mildly, I mean, she was in love with this man. And I'm sure that there's some trauma there. Like, maybe this is the first person that made her feel like she could be herself. Maybe it's the first person that loved her. I don't know. Maybe he was filling some sort of father figure role. So they get married very quickly and then have a child together. Damn. Cece is 18 and so is he. And that's where the problem, the downfall of their marriage comes in. Every able-bodied male citizen in Taiwan is required to serve in the military for, I think, a little over a year. I think it's like 16 months. I think four months of like basic training and then 12 months of active duty. I don't know how to, if they categorize that as a year or 16 months, right? And her husband is like, okay, bye. Gotta go enlist in the army. It's the law. What Good the luck with the kid. What the fuck? Cece gets her life together while he's gone. I don't know if it's a conscious choice. I don't know if she sat down one day and was like, we got this. I got to change. She's a mom, it just like though. happened gradually, I'm not sure. But while her husband is in the army, she is like the epitome of a try hard single mom in the best way possible. Mm. She's working, cleaning the house, taking care of the child. Any free time she had, she would talk to her friends about how perfect her husband was. Mm. She had this calendar where she counted down all the days until he was back. And her friend said, it's like someone went into her brain and installed like a love potion where she can only think about this one person uh. and it's her husband. Every single day, she would get so excited to do the little red X That's on another nice. day, one Aww. day closer for her husband coming back. So a few weeks are remaining before he's finally out. And Cece gets a letter in the mail and she's like skip hopping back to the apartment to open it up. It's from the love of her life, right? She's carefully ripping it open because she's like saving all of his letters. And as she's reading it, her smile is fading. Tears are just streaming down her cheeks. She's gripping the letter tighter and her knuckles are white. By the end of it, all she feels is pure rage and anger. What? Her husband wrote to her to say, basically, hey, thanks for waiting for me and taking care of our child all alone. But once I get out... I'm going to live my life. You know, my parents don't think that you're good enough for me and I don't want anything to do with you or the baby. So. Go the fuck? Good luck. 
Cece's like, okay, this has got to be a joke. It's Nigga, a joke. It's a what? Prank. It's maybe one of those things that people do in the army. Like, you know how Fucking you have to get initiated into the army? Nigga. Maybe the other army bros made him write this, right? And then he's going to come home in a few. It'll be fine. It'll be fine, right? It wasn't fine. Oh, fuck. She had no idea how to contact him, even when he was returning, when he was out of the army. She, had, she couldn't track him down. What? He never came back. So eventually she comes to terms with the fact that, okay, this is my new life. She drops off her child at a relative's house. Oh. She said, I can't look at my kid anymore because looking at my kid reminds me of my husband. Oh, fuck. So she also abandoned the child. Oh, yeah. fuck. She packs how her did, bags. Moves- how does That's interesting as shit. Oh, my God. I pray that that never happens. So what the fuck? Oh, my God. That nigga is a dick. What the hell? To a nearby city. She's 22 when this happens. And she <clears throat> fully snaps. It was sudden. It's weird. One day, her friends are comforting her. She's devastated, which is to be expected after such a shitty breakup, right? But the next day, it's like the old CC gone. Her friends notice that one day her makeup was just regular CC makeup, very light, clean, right? Then it's just so heavy, like smoky eye, intense pigmented colors all over her face. I mean, she's still beautiful. That makeup style is beautiful. It was just so sudden. Like, you know how people chop off all their hair when they're not feeling great mentally? Like, like me? Every girl dyes their hair after a breakup. That was kind of the vibe. So they're like, okay, maybe we should. I used to shave my head every time I almost died or I had like a mental breakdown. I'm so glad that y'all don't know that me. <laughs> you just keep an eye on her. But then it starts getting weirder. Cece starts wearing her pajamas out and just mindlessly strolling around the neighborhood. If someone would make eye contact with her, she would stop walking. Just like, stop walking stare at them and tilt her head up to the sky and start hysterically laughing. Mm. So she's going through something mentally, right? Yeah. And it was kind of creeping people out. A lot of people would cross the street to avoid walking past her. And Cece's friends believe that this is kind of when she went mad. Mm. Her only life goal from this point on was just to drink and get high. And it's clear she's trying to self-medicate with whatever's going on in her head. She's not okay. She's not showering. She's not taking care of herself. I mean, Cece's mom is trying to help by giving her around $250 a month, which doesn't cover the necessities, but that's all Cece's mom had left. Hmm. And Cece would use it on drinking and smoking. Oh my no God. job would hire her. So Cece starts engaging in sex work. Her pricing was $15 to touch her breast, $80 for full intercourse. Or at least that's how it started. And then eventually when her addiction got really bad and she was really desperate, some clients said that her pricing would drop down to $8 for full intercourse. Oh. And the thing that with sex work, okay, personally, I never judge anyone that is engaged in sex work. Yeah, and I know right now we're in the process of everyone trying to destigmatize sex work, which I think is great. But one reality that just cannot be avoided is when you're engaging in this type of work, person to person, it's very dangerous. Like any person to person job is yeah. dangerous. CC would often bring home clients because... She couldn't afford a second location and they didn't want to pay for hotels. Or if they did, they're like, okay, then I'm going to deduct it from what I'm paying you. So she would bring these clients home. And oftentimes they would just brutally assault her and leave without paying. What the fuck? And now that she's acquiring more trauma, she needs more alcohol, more to kind of calm that pain down. And all the neighbors knew. They knew what was going on. These clients didn't even try to hide it. I mean, they would just hear terrified screams coming out of that apartment, banging, yelling, threatening. What the fuck? Good Lord, man. And then a door would slam shut and then someone's stomping away and then the door opens again and Cece's running, demanding to be paid. Originally in the beginning, some neighbors felt so bad for her that they even gave her money here and there. But they felt frustrated because things would never change. You know, Cece would keep bringing people home and they would keep assaulting her. And it, it just, the neighbors felt like we're not doing so great either, you know? Which brings the investigators to think, okay, what if this is some deranged client? I mean, this wouldn't be the first time, right? Look at everything that happens in the US. Serial killers targeting sex workers because they're easy targets. They go unnoticed. And they have confirmation that CC's clients weren't the best law-abiding group of civilians out there. What if some sick, twisted, deranged client had this fantasy that would involve taking CC's life? Mm. So they're like, let's run the DNA. Okay. The investigators run the male fluid DNA uh, that was found on CeCe's undergarments that were wrapped around her head. They also had CCTV footage of a man walking towards the temple bathroom with a plastic bag in their hand, which I know what you're thinking. Okay, that's the easiest way to ID them, right? I'm going to use that as the thumbnail probably. That looks that looks very unsalacious, I think. Um, I think I'm going to have to use Miss CC as well. Uh Okay. Towards the temple bathroom with a plastic bag in their hand, which I know what you're thinking. Okay, that's the easiest way to ID them, right? But the guy is completely covered up. I mean, in the video, it, it just wasn't fuck? that useful, at least right now. Like to look at that video and then look at all the men nearby, it didn't, it's not going to work. The hell? So the DNA is really everything that they had. They run it. Now, there's a strong possibility that it's not going to match to anyone mm-hmm. in the system. That person's not in the system yet. 
but it comes back with a hit. A local taxi driver. Hmm? The police have so many questions for this guy. There had been evidence that Cece's head had been frozen before being covered in salt. Did he try to pickle her? What was the point in preserving it's her head? Fucking to not chef. draw suspicion on odor? But then why leave anonymous notes at a police station three hours away? And then what about the note in the bag that pointed to the victim's identity? Was the taxi driver just purely unhinged? Like, or is there some sort of long game that they're playing? The taxi driver did not answer any of these questions because he's like, I don't even, I didn't even know Cece was dead. He's explaining like, like, you gotta believe me. I only slept with her a few times. I was a client. Like you can arrest me for that if that's what you wanna do, but I didn't murder her. And that's not me on the CCTV footage because that night I have proof. I have witnesses. I was nowhere near that temple when the bag was placed in the bathroom. I was working. Hmm. The police checked his alibi and it cleared. Oh. The taxi driver is not the killer. Okay. So then who the hell is the killer? It's her brother. It all comes back down to a fortune teller. Oh, okay, never mind. The investigators are sitting at their desk trying Sorry, to figure brother. out what the hell is wrong here. It doesn't make sense. Someone killed Cece, and we've got a ton of neighbors that know every little thing that's going on in there. Every little mental breakdown that she's had, they saw it, yet nobody saw anyone suspicious, like a new man lingering around. And then it hit them. They're like, okay, all the neighbors, they know so much about her, or at least we thought they did, right? But remember in the beginning when I said, as they're investigating, all the neighbors are like, Cece who? Oh, and they're all that neighbor, once they see the picture. Records show that Cece legally changed her name to Cece. That's not her real name. Oh. Or, well, it is now. But maybe like a few months ago, it wasn't her name. That's oh. not what everyone in the apartment building knew her by. Apparently, Cece had gone to a fortune teller to ask her about her life. And in a lot of Asian cultures, the mom's name or a woman's name can determine not only her own fate, but the fate of her child as well. And the fortune teller told her, all your hardships, your divorce, they're all going to be passed on to your child, even if you're not with your child right now. What? Unless you change your name. What? So Cece went and she changed her name legally. She went from Chen Ahi to Chen Wan Ting. Mm -hmm. And she told yeah. nobody except a handful of those closest to her. But the letter had Chen Wan Ting on there. Mm, wow. So that means her killer is someone that knew her intimately. It's not a mm. random client because she never gives her real name to clients. Oh. It's someone very, very close to her. Even neighbors didn't even know the new name. Huh. Wow. That is a detail that, wow. So maybe a boyfriend? Maybe a pimp, right? They go back to investigating and they're asking around to see if Cece had someone close to her that seemed dangerous. She's not talking the about like, the... I, I mean, I guess this is kind of random, but she did casually mention quite a few times that she had to go sleep with her brother to make money. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, bro, she was, she was, she's literally leaving out a brother right now. What? And the police are like, her brother? Like, why would you not say that? And they're like, her brother Fang? That's what we're calling him. And then so they're like, why would you not tell us that when we first asked you about it? And the neighbors are like, yeah, no, no, I just thought she was saying like brother, like client, friend, man, like, hello, brother. You know what I mean? Hello, bro. I, I didn't think she was actually talking about her actual brother. But then now that you're asking, oh, is there someone very close to her? I guess like that comes to mind. I mean, these are very big details. So the police are going back to all the neighbors asking. I guess okay, also it's yeah. like the brothers, maybe like Koreans too, like Opa. Yeah. So you can call someone Opa, but you actually your actual brother, you also call him Opa. It's like mm. that. Like. Oh yes, yes, but it's not like my biological brother. It's yeah. like just a male that's older than me. Yes. Yes. Mm. So they're like, oh well, I thought she was talking about clients, yeah. and the police are like, okay, what else? I'm dumb as hell. I just looked up at the title again, and it says brother caught with Mintendamenda. Can you think about like just think anything, any little detail? Come on, think. There were rumors that the brother was a little weird that Fang had an obsession, okay? This is what the neighbors are saying. Some said that he had a journal that he kept about um, an actress named Jeannie. She's a Taiwanese actress. She's pretty. And even Jeannie came forward after this case broke to say like, yeah, that actually happened. So apparently he had a journal that documented his love for her and he declared himself her husband. He would send her tissues filled with male bodily fluids. What? Threatening her if that she filmed any romantic scenes with any other men. Very bad things would happen to her. Bro, what? Bro? He would even go to her fan meets to try and shake her hand, and God knows what else he was trying to do. But Ew. the neighbors are saying, listen, we don't know for sure, okay? It's just a rumor around the block that he's kind of weird. And the police are like, okay, what else? Like, what else could you have missed? Because it seems like you missed a lot of things, right? And one of the neighbors states, and there's the meat grinder. <laughs> These days, someone in that apartment unit has been chopping up meat. Like, you can hear the knife hitting the butcher block. So it's it's like someone chopping up a chicken. Like, a whole chicken. Like, you know when you're chopping up chicken breasts? You're not going to hear it from the apartment next door. But if I'm there butchering a chicken trying to get through bone, then you might hear it. Well, we keep hearing it. And then the meat grinder is just going nonstop at oh night. But we never assumed it was strange because the brother Fang is a chef. He works with a lot of meat. We just thought his sleep schedule had just shifted to be nighttime instead of daytime. And, like, how are we supposed to know? 
它湿湿的血水，清清的啦，不是很红很红的那种，好像有干啊什么什么的，不知道是它内脏之类的，就是留下。So the police are like, okay, when was this? Around the time that Cici stopped showing up. So I guess around the time that she disappeared. The investigators are like, all right then, we're gonna need a whole team here, stat. If neighbors are suggesting and the police are theorizing that the brother could have killed his own sister, that means he would have likely dismembered her, ground up her flesh, and what would you do if you're the killer? Probably dispose of her body parts in a toilet or kitchen sink drain. Don't ask me that. We have to check all the septic tanks, sewage systems. We need to check the pipes to see if Cece's DNA is in there. Oh my God. The police also went in to search the, the unit now with where Fang and Cece lived, and they found very curious evidence. They found several knives with big dents on the blades, like someone was dismembering something much bigger than a chicken. Oh. They found Cece's DNA found in the inside, the slow cooker. The slow cooker? They found her DNA inside the pots. Not on the outside, inside. And I'm sure the DNA was not like a piece of hair. Oh my gosh. Oh. They also found her DNA on knives. The evidence suggests that Fang killed his own sister, dismembered her, and then cooked her remains, probably so it would be easier to dispose down the trains or down the toilet. So bear with me. Theory is dismembered, meat grinder, cooked, then flushed in the toilet, right? Uh huh. The cops found nothing in the septic tank or the sewage system. What? Or the pipes. But they huh? found it in the pot. Yes, and nowhere else in the house. Oh, so you're saying that he didn't flush it down? No. Okay. That's crazy. The fuck did he do so with we it? We don't know. We still don't know to this day what he did. We just know not down the drains. Nigga kept her so head. So we just know she was cooked. No. He, and then oh. what happened next? What? I mean, the obvious question is: Did he consume her? Did he let others consume her? We don't know. So Cece's mom, she hadn't been able to get in contact with Cece for the past three months. That's why she filed that missing persons report. And ever since she found out Cece had been murdered, she had not been able to get any sleep. She had just so many regrets as a mother. One of the biggest being that after all of her kids had grown up, the whole family moved to a neighboring city to find more opportunities and work. Everyone, right? Except for brother Fang and daughter Cece. They stayed behind in their hometown. And Cece's mom would make the trip down to the hometown every single week just to check up on Cece. But at least she's like, you know what? One of my eldest kids, my second son, is taking care of Cece, looking after her. She said that Cece was struggling with her mental health, so the whole family knew that Fang was, you know, particularly attentive towards his younger sister. But towards the end of 2012, Cece just, like, dropped off the face of the earth. She would never respond to text messages, calls, nothing. The she also fuck? just stopped coming home, and Fang is like, I don't know where she is. Yes, you do. They all try searching for her by themselves. The family does. They're calling her, lingering around the apartment, trying to find friends, asking neighbors. Nobody's seen her. They finally file a missing persons report. And the mom, she admitted, you know, I was worried that something bad happened to my daughter. But we were more leaning towards the fact that maybe she met someone new. Maybe she was out drinking. You know, we, none of them thought that her head would be found in a plastic bag left at a temple bathroom. How do you do this to your own fucking sister, bro? Like, what the hell? Like, good God, man. Which, speaking of, in a last ditch effort to try and solve this case, the police bring in Cece's mom one more time. They had already traumatized this poor woman. She was asked to identify her daughter's remains. And since they didn't want to mess with the evidence too much, she basically had to see her daughter's head decapitated and covered in salt. Bro, what? She also saw the clothes that were wrapped around her daughter and she had bought those clothes for her daughter. And so it, it was really rough. Um, the officer said that she was grabbing onto their jackets, shaking them, like bawling on the ground, screaming, tell me what happened. You need to figure out what happened. I don't know how she's going to cope with son and daughter. Like, Yeah, they, it's like a moment mom. where the mom, I think, realized that true evil existed in this world and her daughter must have come face to face with the devil. Mm. That's the feeling. The fuck? So the officer is your son. Like, yeah. How do you even... You're, it's kind of surprising her reaction later um so the officers they hesitantly bring in the mom again and they start asking the questions about her son's relationship with the daughter and i mean obviously the mom is taken off guard she feels like the police are kind of framing it all strange which i mean clearly it's not like that she's saying no my son fang is a good kid who's helping take care of my younger no, daughter not. he probably wasn't the best caretaker she's still engaged in sex work and did drugs. and like yes i know that's bad but we're all doing the best that we can the officers finally show her the cctv footage this is like March of 2013. So Taiwan in March is not that cold, not puffer jacket cold. He's wearing a puffer jacket, wearing a mask, sunglasses, and a curly wig, like an ajuma wig, an the old fuck? lady wig, which just felt so off-putting, right? Very strange. The figure is seen covered up completely, like they don't want to be recognized. <laughs> They're holding a black plastic bag, and they disappear near the temple because there's no more CCTV cameras. They walk back out without the plastic bag. Mm. So Cece's mom takes one look at the footage and she feels destroyed. 
in the span of like a week or two, she identified her daughter as the brutal murder victim and her son as the predator and killer of her daughter. Mm. And everyone's just wondering, why would the brother do this? Yeah. The theory the is her brother was her pimp and things had escalated. Yeah, you're, yeah, you, 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 you short haired fuck. You are on the thumbnail. Fuck you, dude. You nasty fuck. You nasty Until bitch. Until it's speculated that they themselves Ugh. had a very twisted relationship. So Fang would allegedly pimp her out, take most of the money that she earned, minus the money that she would need to spend on He really only allowed it because drugs would be the way to keep her compliant. It would be mm. to keep her in check, make her easy to control. Which is, this part is already so sick and twisted, especially between siblings. But even worse than that, it's suspected that he was sexually abusing his own sister. Bro, how do you Their do mom this would send Cece $250 a month, but she would ask her son Fang to take the money first and then split it into small payments and give it to Cece throughout the month because she was worried if she gave it to her all at once, it would just go to s right? And to Cece's mom, it appeared like her son Fang was just this nice older brother, but in reality, he was dangling the money over Cece's head to get her to perform sexual acts for him, his own sister. It's speculated that this is just how it started for 14 years. Fucking disgusting. What? And eventually, 14 after 14 years, Cece's not bringing in enough money for Fang. Four, She's becoming a 14 fucking years, dude? A liability. She's 39 years old at this point. She's been doing she's been in this line of work for the past at least 14 years oh my god I mean, this would have taken a large toll on her mental health physical health and if we're being very thorough also on her appearance because drugs are known to be very very damaging to i guess appearance not that that's the biggest thing but in this line of work it might matter you know and fang decides it's time to move on he also thinks about his own life he's like you know what i want to start a family i want to have a wife and kids and i can't do that when there's strange men in and out of the house and my sister is making explicit noises in the room next door like i can't do that what would my wife think what the so that's one problem but another problem is that in china there's something called a dowry oh no it's not required by law or anything but it's pretty standard since there are a lot more men than there are women in china to get married men have gotten kind of creative and it's also a tradition right some men will get creative trying to secure a family they will bring lump sums of cash to the bride's family shower the bride with gold literally gold give gift them luxury items all these things to be able to marry the woman that they love right now typically the dowry is different amongst each marriage and class it's it's a lot of money and it typically um it shouldn't bankrupt a man and his family right <laughs> So it just depends on how well you're doing financially. But Fang had just met a woman from Fujian mm -hmm. on a blind date. And he wants to marry her. They don't even know each other. But he's like, you know what? She's nice. She's willing to move to Taiwan. The only thing is, he would need to pay $35,000 for a dowry. What's wild, though, is that her family didn't even request a dowry. They said, actually, our daughter being able to move to Taiwan is enough for us. We think that she'll have more opportunities in Taiwan. But he's like, no, I'm going to get you guys a dowry. I'm going to take out a loan and give you a dowry. So they get married, he does the dowry, and she's tying up loose strings, his wife, packing her things in mainland China to move to Taiwan. So after his marriage, he's like, you know what? I need, this is the time to get rid of my sister because there's no other time. Once my wife the moves fuck? here, I can't get rid of my sister. It's time for my sister to be useful again. What? Fang had worked in the insurance industry before all of this, so he knew a lot about life insurance, how it worked, how to get paid. So starting in 2011, this is two years before the murder. It's a meticulously thought out plan. Fang starts buying up life insurance policies for his sister, totaling up to a quarter million dollars, $250,000, two years before her death. Then he killed her, and then he sent the letter. Now, this is not for his own guilt that he wants his sister to at least be buried and rest in peace. No, it was for insurance purposes. What Fang knew that fuck? if his sister's death couldn't be confirmed and she had only disappeared, he would have to wait on average seven years to claim the money. That is too long. He needed the authorities to know who this was so that they could confirm her death and he could get paid $250,000. That's why he also fuck? chose a very public bathroom at a temple to do it so her head would be found faster. Oh. But he did try to confuse the police with the taxi driver DNA. So he found underwear, wrapped her in it, right? And he made sure to kill his sister before his new wife moved in, slowly disposing, disposing of her remains. So it's assumed that the rest of her body was dismembered and ground up. Oh my God. But the only problem was he needed to keep the head because that's what would give him the life insurance payout. That's the ID. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have time to get rid of the head before his new wife moved in. That's crazy. So, so the wife doesn't even know that's the sister. No, because she never met the sister. Wow. But she did hear that the sister had gone missing. But the, and, and the wife didn't go to the police? No. 
Hmm. Yeah. So Fang's oh. wife, she goes by uh, Mrs. Lu in the media, but we'll call her Lucy, right? Um, author- she's the one from the beginning of this story. Mm-hmm. Authorities tracked her down in mainland China and started asking her questions about the relationship. And they said at first she seemed really traumatized and scared. Yeah, she like, refused to talk. She kept asking if they were a thousand percent sure if Fang was going to be locked up for good for this. And when they finally assured her, yes, he cannot touch you, he cannot do anything to you or your family, then she started telling them the story of how she found a head in their freezer. She said that she moved to Taiwan looking for a better life compared to her hometown. That's honestly a pretty big reason why she married him, right? But when she got there, she realized pretty quickly, okay, it's kind of the same as my hometown. Like, it's not really, it's not bad, but it's the same as my hometown, same amount of opportunities, but instead I'm away from my family and friends. Mm. Instead, I'm isolated. So it's just kind of, for her personally, she didn't like it. Mm. And now that she had married this guy, she's like, okay, maybe we can find love. She tries so hard. And at first it was kind of cute. He's cooking. He's always in the kitchen. And she thought he, he always seemed mature. He had a provider mindset, right? But then slowly after she saw the head in the fridge, and even just a little bit before, there were these little red flags that she would see. He kept telling her after the head that he bought her. Like he didn't say he married her. He said he bought her. What? That she was his and he could return her or do whatever else he wanted with her because she belonged to him. Why would you say this to, you know what, bitch? He also talked a lot about his little sister. And the words that he used made Lucy very uncomfortable. He would call Cece, quote, not a good thing. Like, he always talked about how promiscuous she was and how it disgusted him. How she had fallen to drugs and drinking and now she's gone. And Lucy's like, oh, what happened to your sister? I used to live with her, but now she's missing. What? Did you report her missing? No. Lucy remember trying to bring up Cece again and again. And what? she's like, okay, if your sister is missing, like no matter how much you disagree with her lifestyle, you still have to report her missing because that's basic human decency, right? But Fang refused. He yelled at her to stay out of it. Don't stick her nose in where it doesn't belong and know her place, basically. Why would you tell... So that, with the head, I mean... Why the fuck would you tell her if you don't want her to know, you dumb dumb? You dummy? What? You dumbass mother... You dumb dumb? What the hell? And she's in Taiwan. She's got no friends, no one to trust. It felt like Fang would just kill her too if he knew that she knew about what he did. Even if he suspected that she knew, her life was in danger. So she waited a few weeks to come up with a believable lie that her family member died and she had to go back for the funeral. She managed to escape to her family, but she had zero proof of what she saw. Mm. And at that point, she's like, he's probably gotten rid of the head. Even when she was telling her family about it, some people were looking at her like she lost her mind. I mean, there was no way that the police were going to believe her. And if they investigated without convicting Fang, she would have a big target on her back. She knows he would have killed her too. She knows it, even if she never saw the head. Because now after learning about all of this, Lucy said, after moving to Taiwan, he kept bringing her to all these life insurance companies trying to get life insurance on her. And they all said, we can't because she's not a permanent resident of Taiwan yet. So she can't have life insurance here. She can have it in mainland China, but not here, at least not right now. Mm. And she said, Fang seemed really disappointed. And she's like, well, I don't have plans on dying anytime soon. I'm in my 20s. Oh, she's only 20s. Yeah. And Fang said, the aliens made him do it. Okay, let me explain. Yeah, so the police go in to arrest (laughs) Fang, Cece's own biological brother, and authorities thought, this guy is sick and twisted. We don't know what he's been doing. He might try to use force. He might try to fight back and get violent. So they blindside him, sneak up in the apartment building, take down the door, slam him up against the walls, handcuff him, and Fang did not fight. He actually went limp like a rag doll. It was odd. And then they heard this, like, trickle, trickle noise. And he had peed himself. Oh, God. So the four officers, they had to carry him out. He apparently couldn't even walk anymore. It was a lot. There That's was just pee get. trailing behind him. That's what you get. But still, being officers, they're thinking, oh, easy peasy. This guy's gonna this guy's gonna confess so quickly, right? He's got no backbone. He he's pee-pee. already so terrified. He knows he's screwed. He pee peed. But when they sit him down in the interrogation room, it's like he's a different person. Huh? They're like, where was that guy in the car just two seconds ago? He's calm, collected. He either stayed silent and gave the officers nothing, or he deflected all the questions. He even calmly threatened to file complaints against the police for coercion. So imagine arresting someone, they're peeing themselves because they're so scared. They've seemingly lost all bodily functions. But then a minute later, they're in the interrogation room, smelling of urine, and they're saying, Officer, you shouldn't ask questions like that. According to Criminal Code 97... Yo, what's up with that? Bro, I'd be tripping. What the fuck do you... What, nigga? What? Yeah. They think that he was probably putting on a show when he was arrested. He peed? For what reasons? To make it seem like he's mentally unwell. Oh. Mm, I see. So ultimately... That's even more sick and twisted that he peed himself just to... Yeah. Fake uh, whatever. Wow. Because before he was arrested, he went to a psychiatrist and asked them to diagnose him with a mental disorder. Mm. And they were like, do you have a mental disorder? Ultimately, the prosecutors had a lot going for them. The wife's testimony, neighbor's testimony, the forensic evidence, the CCTV footage. Side note about the CCTV footage. The police were also able to find more footage closer to Fang's apartment that showed the same figure. So basically, they were able to track him. Like, not completely, but 
pretty good. Wow. Also, the CCTV shows Fang bringing Cece's head to the temple two days before the head was found, meaning for two full days, locals, tourists, temple goers had used that restroom not knowing that there was a head there. Mm. And side note about this, Fang said that he was anxious after placing the head in the bathroom, not for the reasons that you would think, though. Like, he just killed his sister, disposed of her body in the most horrific way. Maybe he's scared of guilt, potentially even getting caught. But no, he said he was anxiously checking the news for two days because he was worried that he was terrified. That they wouldn't know it's her. No, that someone oh. would just throw it away without checking. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He wants he this wants to, to be known. So he can his money. Fuck. Exactly. And he's like, then it would be a headache. I'd have to wait seven years to get the insurance payout. So even with all of this out in the open, Fang's like, I'm not going to go down without a fight. He starts pretending to be insane in the courtroom, collapsing, waking up and saying, the aliens are here. They've implanted a chip in my brain and the aliens have controlled me. He would pretend to cry and say, the aliens made me kill my sister. They controlled me to commit these acts and I remember it. I remember it. I don't want to remember it. They manipulated me. They want me to end my life so I can't speak the truth. And then the court would be out of session because they're like, this man is unhinged. Go put him in his cell, right? The minute he gets in his cell, he turns around. He's cool, calm, collected. And he starts bragging to his cellmates about his murder. What yeah. And then the, the next day, he'd be dragged back into court, drooling, collapsing, showing reports from the psychiatrist that he was mentally ill before. This guy is a fucking weirdo. Before he was even arrested. Because remember what I said? It's like he had this insurance plan that if he does get arrested, he could just plea insanity. He's like, look, I've got all the reports. Profession. You know what's funny? Like over here, some people want to plea insanity, but they say that as if like they don't get sent to a mental asylum or something, which is which I've heard is kind of worse than jail. And they're like, bro, what the fuck? Just take me to jail. Like, nigga, if you do something crazy, you can't just get out of it. Nigga, they don't just send you back on the streets just because you plead insane. Nigga, you're still going somewhere like. You probably just won't get the death penalty. Like National examinations what? after his arrest revealed Fang to be mentally sound and fit to stand trial. Oh, wow. But Cece's mom and Fang's mom stood by Fang. What? She said that it was probably a mental breakdown. She testified that their family does have a history of hereditary mental disorders. And she begged the judge to not to not give the death penalty to Fang. She said, I already lost a daughter. Please spare my uh, son. I miss my daughter very much, but at this point, what else can I do? I lady, I'm so sorry, but your son is gone regardless. I'm so sorry, but... Mm. I hope the judges can forgive Fang and give him another chance. And she argued, her son is a good son. He's never done anything bad before. That's crazy. I wonder if there's a level of like um, son versus daughter, you know, how the mm, traditional yeah. view... Mm. In the end, Fang was sentenced April 30th, 2015. He was facing the death penalty, but the judges did take his mom's pleas into consideration. They gave him life imprisonment instead. And netizens were really confused on how to feel about this, right? Some netizens just felt sad. They said, we feel sad for Cece, we feel sad for the mom, for exactly. the situation. And they asked the question, what parts of Cece did her brother kill before he finally killed her physically? If he had been assaulting her, forcing her to do drugs, forcing her to do sex work, like, this was not a fast kill yeah he was probably killing her slowly yeah. for over a decade oh my god 14 but, that, but other people years. felt like the mom doesn't know what she's talking about and the court should not have listened to her they said do you think a respectful son like the mom claims would kill his own sister for insurance money others wondered any mother whose child is so viciously taken from them they would hate and despise the killer with all their heart but when they realize that the killer is their own son do they still hate and despise as much? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. What do you think of the question? I don't think so. Leave it in the comments. I mean, let me know all your thoughts this in the shit comments. Is nuts. I read most of the comments. I'm always lurking down there. And I'm just very interested in this case because I imagine like the feeling of she's got this intense hatred for whoever did this to her daughter. And then to find out it was her son. Mm -hmm. Does something shift right there? Does something change? Does that hatred suddenly dim down? Mm. Like what happens? Or is it a different kind of pain? Does that hatred turn into sorrow? I, I'm not a parent, so it's really hard for me to like even mm -hmm. imagine. So parents out there, please leave it in the comments. Yo, but please stay safe. And I will see you guys on Sunday for the mini-sode. Nigga, this shit is... Oh, my God. Fuck that nigga Fang, bro. Ugh. How can you do that to your own sister, dude? Like, I don't, I don't have a sister. But I can imagine if I had a sister... I'm not doing that shit. Like, what? The fuck? Get some insurance money, nigga. Get the fuck out of here. Boy. Ew, that's nasty. That's nasty. Rest in peace to CC. And I feel bad for the mom and fuck a fang, nigga. Nasty ass nigga. You freaky ass nigga. Yuck. That shit is disgusting.
Ugh. Y'all stay safe out there. What do y'all think about this? What, that actually, I want to know. What I feel like if I was a parent, I probably would feel bad. I I would still have hatred, even if it's my son. Like, nigga, you're still going down for that. Or maybe what if the mom said, don't give him the death penalty so he can suffer for what he did with life in prison? I don't know. I don't know. What do y'all think? Please just put it in the comments. I'll be reading the comments too. I'll be lurking, but this is nasty. And, and I, I think I'm still getting the rice cooker though. I don't know. Rice and beef is CC, bro. It's just, this is, man, what the fuck? I, oh my God. You, ugh, freaky fuck. You freaky fang fuck. Ew.